Welcome everyone and thank you for in inviting me into this uh, conversation here. So I'm Gunjan Sinha, Chairman of Metric Stream and involved with a number of ventures in Silicon Valley. I've been a serial, serial entrepreneur for a number of years. And with me I have Vijay, Vijay Samba Murthy, and I'll let him introduce himself. Vijay. Thank you, Gunjan. It's uh, a delight to be here at the Horace's India meeting. And I'm Vijay Sambamurthy. I'm the founder and managing partner of Lexigen. Uh, we are an Indian law firm headquartered in Bangalore, and we have offices in Singapore, but uh, we have a pan-Indian focus, so we do a lot of uh, cross-border uh, work relating to India, and uh, we help companies come into India to do business and to acquire companies. And we also help uh, Indian companies that are looking to make investments and acquisitions outside India. So we, uh, Gunjan and I are here to talk about the very current and uh, interesting topic of you know, how India can uh, take further steps to make it even easier to do business in India. Uh, we know that uh, the Prime Minister Modi has uh, almost made it a mission for improving uh, ease of uh, business in India. And there have been a lot of initiatives that the government has undertaken. And uh, I must start by, you know, congratulating the government on these initiatives. And uh, it has borne fruit. We were ranked, you know, very, very low in terms of the Global Ease of Doing Business Index. Uh, I'm told we are now at number 77 in the world. While that may not seem like a very high ranking, it is still a, a, a jump of you know, more than 70 places or 70 ranks in, in two years, which is incredibly impressive. So, you know, uh, Gunjan, what do you think as, uh, as somebody who's looking at the system from outside and, you know, uh, and who has a very good understanding of the Indian uh, market, do you think, uh, you know, foreign investors and, you know, businessmen like yourselves are happy with the uh, changes that the government has brought about? No, so, so firstly, this is a topic which is uh, very near and dear to me. Uh, so uh, I would recall back in very early 90s when I first uh, got into, you know, setting up my first center in New Delhi and mm -hmm. then, you know, in my current company as, and where I'm the chairman at Metricstream, we have operations in Bangalore. Number of the businesses that I've been involved with, they have operations in Bangalore and Pune and Delhi and so forth. And I've seen over the years how India has actually streamlined the business environment to be able to make things easier and simple. Mm -hmm. And even some basics of how you look at your, you know, being on the board of directors sure. or how they look at, you know, your identity uh, in, the, in the starting of the DIN numbers and the identification numbers as well as the process of how you file your required paperwork and taxes and all of those things have been streamlined quite a bit and it makes logical sense of how it's getting more and more digital sure. uh, as an experience too. So sitting from Silicon Valley looking at India and doing you know business I feel that the biggest leapfrog that I see in the whole process is it's becoming more and more digital mm -hmm. and to me that's the way to go and you want to make it digital, you want to make it available telephonically, sure. so without the needs of actually having to visit the offices of the government to mm -hmm. get things done. And I think I see India go there in that direction very, very strongly. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely helped us. And it keeps our interests in India quite intact. In fact, we are looking to double down on our investments of things that we are doing in India today and into the future. Sure. And uh, so I'm personally very optimistic that the changes brought about by the government and with now Prime Minister Modi back in the office, mm -hmm. we get another, f uh, I guess, five years of run. I think things are going to get with even better. With a better majority, with a stronger yes. majority. With a stronger majority, it only gets better. Oh, but it's interesting that you make that point about increasing digitalization. Uh, you know, understandably, uh, India has been a very tech-savvy country, at least for the past uh, couple of decades. Uh, but one can really see the fruits of all that tech and digital investments in the last... 10 years in particular, and even more so in the last five years, I would say. And uh, while all those good things exist, I agree with you that there still can be some things that India can do to uh, make it 
easier to do business. We are still at number 77. We need to be, you know, aspiring for maybe seven, maybe one at some stage in time. But uh, what, what are some of the things I feel that the government can do to improve this? I think at the f uh, first instance is the point of entry. Uh, as you know, being based in California, uh, you can set up a company literally in a day and you don't need any uh, help of lawyers and anybody. And though I say this, uh, I don't think we should need direct help of a lawyer to set up a company. It should be fairly straightforward. So I think uh, compared to where we were, I think we have made you know, progress in leaps and bounds. But it still takes close to a, a month for a company to become operational in India. And I think that's one area that needs to come down because even though the company can be set up in less than a week, I think the problem is that there are a bunch of registrations and uh, actions to be done which pretty much take a whole month for a company. So that's one area the government could focus on. The second um, is also, you know, going to the other extreme. When, when uh, I have clients from abroad coming in to set up a company in India, they ask me, how quick is it to set it up, which we just talked about. The second thing they ask me is, how, how easy is it to get out? And that's where they get really get spooked. Because in India, winding up a company can take anything from two to three to four years. And, you know, a lot of people have horror stories where they go back and tell their peers and, you know, markets that they took four years to get a company unwound. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts as well on, do you see these kind of issues as, you know, being big barriers and being uh, a problem? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, you know, so I look at it, the, the both the birth and the death of companies, how you create a company, but also how do you kind of sunset a company, they have to be streamlined. Indeed. And the sunset is equally important. Sure. Because it has to happen quickly, briskly, and with effortless, uh, I think there's work to be done there mm -hmm. in India. Uh, the other areas where I see room for improvement is around, you know, India's approach and there's a number of initiatives underway in terms of, you know, cracking down on corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think the more India brands itself as a clean place for business, uh, with strong compliance, strong governance, strong risk management, uh, and these are areas which you know my company Metric Stream, which focuses on risk and compliance and governance mm -hmm. uh, areas. Those areas are going to become more important. Sure. That will then f give f more confidence to incoming investors and companies to feel comfortable that India is a clean place, it's an easy place to do business, mm -hmm. it's easy to set up, it's easy to kind of, uh, kind of close a business, yeah. and it's clean and, you know, with less corruption. So that's where you move from 77 to 7. Absolutely. And one last point I would add, which is very important in relation to this is, well, cracking down on corruption is important. I'm a little concerned that recent approaches by the government have been a little on the overzealous side, while the intent is very good and noble, and uh, I'm in all in support, all of us are in support of cleaning up the country and removing corruption. I think the way to go about it is not to do sweeping things, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You need to make sure that good companies, good entrepreneurs are not suffering because of sweeping action by the government. Yes. On the other hand, the ones that do need to be weeded out need to be dealt with very swiftly, uh, so that you don't have, you know, bad conduct exacerbated. So that's something which uh, is a thing. And uh, the last point I think also is angel tax. I've been talking a lot about it, and I'm sure a lot, you know, you must be making in, in investments. I think, you know, uh, a country which is making so much effort to become like the startup uh, innovation hub of the world or the new order should not be uh, stifling innovation by taxing uh, investors, uh, angel investors, because most of these companies, before they can get funding from institutional funds, uh, rely on friends and family and high net worth individuals to fund them. And uh, the minute you start taxing them, you're spooking the angel ecosystem. And suddenly the startups are not looking as uh, strong as they should be looking. Uh, so, uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, I think we need to encourage, not deter, kind of investments into early stage. And to me, India's future lies in the startup, and that's how India leapfrogs. Absolutely. And that's going to be the multiplier of jobs in India. It's going to be the innovation driver, and it's going to be the future of how India 
you know, really do becomes the dominant player in the world. So I think encouraging more startups to get created through more angel investing and so forth is the way to go. Indeed. And um, I think it's, it's very interesting for us uh, to have this conversation. I hope this conversation is useful. And I hope that, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the government led by PM Modi uh, pushes further uh, with reforms to make it easier for foreign companies and foreign investors to, you know, do business in India. All right. So it's wonderful having this interaction on the sidelines of the Horaces India meeting. Yeah. And uh, nice talking to you yeah, on nice this topic, Nice talking to you. Pinja. And thank you. Thank you.